This video will show you how to quickly get a demo of the video codec unit on the Xilinx ZCU106 board up and running by using the Jupyter Notebooks in the pre-built WIC image from the ZCU106 Petalinux BSP. With the launch of Crea, you might have seen easy-to-use getting started material with package feeds and Jupyter Notebooks for the Crea starter kit. Did you know Xilinx also has pre-built images, package feeds, and Jupyter Notebooks for some of the ZCU evaluation boards? If you find these walkthroughs helpful, you can subscribe to the Kestrel Omnitech YouTube channel so you get notified when I post new videos. To avoid duplication, I created a separate video on preparing the SD card with the pre-built WIC image for the ZCU-106 and then setting up the terminal program to interact with the ZCU-106. What comes next assumes you've already completed these steps. So, now that we have our terminal set up to be able to interact with Linux, I'll turn the board on. We'll just fast forward through the boot messages in the video. There are some messages here about the Jupyter Notebook server that is already running. Now, if somehow you did a whole bunch of stuff after boot up and the Jupyter Notebook URL has scrolled away too far up your console, you can look for the URL and token elsewhere. According to the 2021.2 Video Codec Unit Logicore IP Product Guide PG252, you should be able to get it in the file var log Jupyter log. Unfortunately, as you can see, my Jupyter log lacks those details. Fortunately, we can look for an HTML file in the Jupyter runtime directory and the URL and token live in there. So let's cat this file. Now, why wouldn't I try to open this HTML file in my browser on my laptop? That's because this file lives on the ZCU-106, and I'm just viewing it via the terminal program. Okay, so let's go to this URL in the browser on my laptop. And now I'm interacting with the ZCU-106. Note, I made sure to disconnect my laptop from any VPN. A VPN might otherwise interfere with my laptop's attempts to talk to the ZCU-106 through my home router, which is connected to the ZCU-106 via Ethernet cable. In this directory are the VCU example notebooks. I've just got a USB camera and no spare monitor, so I'm going to pick the notebook VCU demo camera encode file. Here's the system diagram. The input comes in from the USB camera, the video gets encoded by the VCU and the output gets dumped into a file. Let's follow the steps indicated in the notebook. We're already talking to the ZCU-106 through the Ethernet cable and the serial cable. Let's see if we have any video devices before I plug in the USB camera. Nope. Next, I'll plug in the USB camera. I have a Logitech C920. Now let's see if I have any video devices after. Yes. I don't have the board on a private network, so I'll skip step four. Now I'll get the audio device name. And it matches what's in the notebook. So I'll assume whatever defaults in the notebook will work for this. For the USB camera capabilities, we did not find any device ID like dev video zero in the dmessage log that got printed, but we did check which video devices appeared once I plugged it in. I do have a dev video zero. So we'll run the v4l2 control command on dev video zero, and I'm going to pipe it through less so we can look at the output slowly. Oops, typo. There we go. 
So this is basically telling us what sizes and frames per second are supported. Next, let's see if V4L Utils is installed using DNF. You can check out my other video with the ZCU106 that talks more about using DNF. Anyway, let's see what package group contains V4L Utils by doing a DNF repo query and grepping for V4L Utils. Okay, so we've got package group Ped Linux V4L Utils here. Now I'll try to do a DNF install of the package group to see if it's installed or not. It is already installed. Great. The code for the Jupyter Notebook is visible here in case you want to make modifications for your own experimentation. So I'm just going to run through all the cells to generate the forms and buttons that we will use for the demo and hide the raw code. Great, so we've got the options for the application here. And if you want to see the raw code, you can use this button. For the camera device ID, I'm going to put dev video zero. Since my camera is a Logitech C920, just like the example mentioned earlier in this notebook, I'll leave the rest as their default values. So that's 640 by 480. Now let's begin video capture. My camera is glowing blue, so I know it's capturing. And if we go back to this directory, we see the camera output TS file, and it's growing in size. I'll stop the notebook now, and we'll see the output file stops growing. I'm going to rename the file so that we can try this again with another configuration. So to try with a different resolution, we can take a look at the output of V4L2 control and see what is supported. So let's pick 1920 by 1080. We see five frames per second is supported. And we don't wanna do the default for frame rate because that will produce an invalid configuration. As you can see here, the default was 30 frames per second. Now we've got another camera output file that's growing. So I'll stop the notebook here and shut down Linux and power off the board. So I powered off the board and grabbed the SD card and now I'll pop that into my laptop. If I go to the rootfs partition of the SD card and we go to the VCU notebook directory, you see we've got our camera output files here. I'll open the one that's 640 by 480 with VLC player, and we can see the codec information. 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second. And then this one is the 1920 by 1080 file. So I'll open that and look at the codec info. 1920 by 1080, frame rate of five. Thanks for watching.